Brownian motion. If we closely observe the sun rays entering a room through a window, we can find minute dust particles moving randomly in air. Have you ever wondered why this happens? This type of random motion can also be observed in particles suspended in a liquid medium. Consider an arrangement in which a light source is placed in front of a powerful microscope. A strong beam of light from the light source is focused onto the glass cell of the microscope. This glass cell contains water in which pollen grains are suspended. While studying such an arrangement in the year 1827, an English biologist, Robert Brown, made an amazing discovery. He observed that the pollen grains performed some random haphazard motion in the water. In another observation, the minute smoke particles in air also showed the same phenomenon. In honour of its first observer, Robert Brown, this random movement in the fluids was called Brownian motion. But Robert Brown could not explain the reason behind this movement. It was finally explained in 1905 by Albert Einstein, who realised that it was caused by the invisible molecules of the fluid hitting the particles randomly from all directions. Let us try to understand the phenomenon of Brownian motion by performing a simple experiment. The setup consists of a hollow frame. Several metal beads are placed inside the frame. A plastic chip is also placed in the center. Now, the frame is vibrated evenly. You can observe that as the frame vibrates, it hits some metal beads and they start moving. These metal beads go on to hit other metal beads within the frame. Consequently, these rapidly moving metal beads go on smacking into the plastic chip kept in the center. And it starts showing random haphazard motion in all directions. Next, let us see how the size of the chip affects its random movement. We replace this chip with a larger chip. Again, when the frame is vibrated, the metal beads start moving and hit the chip. But this time, the motion shown by the chip is comparatively less than the previous time. This is because the impacts occurring on every side of the chip cancel out each other and there is very less resultant force acting on the chip. Hence, the motion performed by the chip is less. Next, replace this chip also by a smaller chip. Again, when the frame starts vibrating, the metal beads start moving and hit the chip. This time, the chip performs relatively more motion than the previous two cases. The same principle is applicable in the case of Brownian motion also. Medium in which the pollen grains are suspended, that is, water, consists of several molecules. Even though being extremely small and invisible to our eyes, these molecules have their own size of about 10 raised to minus 10 meters as well as mass. While the pollen grains, which are visible particles, are comparatively larger with the size of about 10 raised to minus 5 meters. The water molecules act like the beads in random motion. During this random motion, the water molecules constantly hit the suspended pollen grains from different directions. 
As a result, the pollen grain spins, moves, sometimes rising, while sometimes sinking in all possible directions, ceaselessly within the fluid. Due to such bombarding from the invisible water molecules, the pollen grains perform a random motion which we call Brownian motion. Brownian motion helps us to ensure that all matter consists of atoms and molecules. The physical phenomenon where minute particles immersed in a fluid or floating on its surface move about randomly is called Brownian motion. Let us see different factors on which the Brownian motion of a suspended particle depends. As the size of the particle increases, its Brownian movement decreases. Conversely, if the size of the particle decreases, the Brownian movement shown by this particle will be more. So we can say that Brownian motion inversely depends upon the size of the suspended particle. Next, the Brownian motion depends inversely upon the density of the medium also. Low density of any liquid means less number of molecules or more intermolecular space. Hence, any particles suspended in this liquid after undergoing collisions with these molecules can move about freely in comparatively larger space, thereby exhibiting more Brownian movement. Hence, we have seen that the Brownian movement exhibited by the particle will be more in a liquid having low density while it will be less in a denser liquid due to more number of molecules in the liquid or in other words less intermolecular space. Brownian motion of a particle also depends upon the temperature of the medium. Temperature of any medium indicates the average kinetic energy of the constituent molecules of the medium and high temperature of a liquid means high average kinetic energy of its constituent particles. When any particle is suspended in such liquid, the rapidly moving molecules will hit the particle in such a way that the resultant force acting on the particle is also high. Simultaneously, the particle shows more random movement. On the other hand, if the temperature of the liquid is low, then the resultant force acting on the suspended particle is low and it exhibits less Brownian motion. So, we can say that the Brownian motion of the particles increases with the increase in temperature. Hence, we have concluded that a small particle suspended in a low-density medium at a high temperature will contribute to an increase in Brownian motion. Brownian motion is observed even for particles which are smaller than pollen grains and having extremely small diameter of about 10 raised to minus 6 meters, in other words, about one millionth part of a meter. In spite of having understood the reason behind Brownian motion for more than 100 years, the scientists all over the world still face problems while trying to study small biological particles in some solution as these particles do not remain stationary in the medium but undergo Brownian motion.